welcome into the at Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star the Flippin' Hippo, and today is actually St. Patrick's Day. It is March 17th in 2020, Tuesday. I'm sure a lot of us have lost track of what day it is and what holiday it is, but it is St. Patrick's Day today. So happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody. Um, I hope you guys are all staying safe and being calm in this time of what's going on in the world. Um, so tonight, that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the current climate, what's going on, what it means for us as people and individuals and humans, and what it means for us as business owners. If you're here because you are, uh, you know, Esmeralda, and you're not familiar with me or my channel, um, my name is Star. I'm one half of a business team. My partner is Silent. Um, Keith, we, we both do reselling full time. This is our job. This is all we do now. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, things always happen at a bad time for us, but Keith had left his job three weeks ago to join me full time. So we're going to be struggling to maintain the business to support both of us through this, but we'll talk about that. Um, I'm a social media influencer and, um, I'm pretty funny, I guess sometimes. So, um, if you are here because you are one of my subscribers and you're not familiar with Esmeralda, I'm going to let her tell you a little bit about herself now. Hello, everyone. My name is Esmeralda, and I am a certified emergency manager. And uh, that means that I've kind of gone through some rigorous training and testing around disaster management topics. And I've spent most of my career actually working in the healthcare world. So I've done an awful lot of uh, planning around that kind of disaster work. So everything that's going on now, it's right in my wheelhouse. And I also, uh, I also am a fellow reseller. Uh, I have a Poshmark and an eBay store. So I'm um, happy to be here to share my knowledge of both of my passions. <laughs> Yeah, and actually, for those of you that don't know, before I was a reseller, I worked in the healthcare field as well. Um, I actually do this because I'm disabled because I got hurt on the job taking care of somebody. Um, I hurt my back. So um, I haven't never worked in emergency preparedness, but I actually worked in nursing homes and around um, high risk folks like uh, adults with disabilities and nursing homes. And back when we had uh, the avian flu and the H1N1, I had to take special classes in preparedness and all that good stuff about sanitation and washing your hands and stuff. So um, most people in the healthcare field are trained in that. So we'll talk about a whole bunch of stuff tonight. I hope you guys are have brought your questions and your concerns with you. Um, if you saw where I promoted this video on social media, I want to reiterate what I said. This is a very weird, very unprecedented time for Americans. It is scary. This is something that is new. I mean, unless you were around for 100 years ago for the uh, Spanish flu and the Great Depression and the stock market crashing then, this is all new to all of us. It's unprecedented. It's weird. It's scary, let's be honest, it's a little scary, but if you can be prepared, you don't have to be scared, and that rhymes. So that's how you can remember it. If you could be prepared, you don't have to be scared. Good. So I have some questions I wanted to ask Esmeralda before we do anything else. Um, I think the, this is gonna be the most important thing we address tonight. I want her to tell you guys the difference and the definition of the words epidemic, pandemic, and endemic, endemic. Okay, so an epidemic is just an outbreak of something. It's something that's being experienced widely across groups in a geographical area. Uh, but generally you're talking about something confined to a single geographical area. Um, now people have been playing fast and loose with the term pandemic, but the purest term of a pandemic uh, means pan or many. It means that more than one country is now affected. Uh, so as soon as the virus uh, jumped uh, from its first location to the second location, then you have uh, you have a pandemic. Of course, the World Health Community was very careful with using that term uh, because some people assume that the word pandemic means, uh, oh my God, everyone's gonna die. It's a bad thing. I mean, yes, it's a bad thing, but it's really more a definition of how widespread it is and not how serious it is. Uh, so there's no reason to, with the new definition to think that it's any more deadly than it was when it, uh, we first started hearing about it. Um, obviously, as more data comes out, it becomes more accurate, but the definition doesn't change that. 
But the last one, endemic, is a really important one because I think it really goes to the whole, why do we care about what's going on in the world right now, um, especially if it doesn't affect me? Um, well, you know, the, the deal is if, if we can hold back what's going on right now, uh, we might be able to prevent it from becoming endemic. And by endemic, I mean that is something that will continue to come around every year. Um, and so there's something called H1N1. That one um, was a few years ago. It came out as a new flu and uh, it, w it was not contained. And as a result, uh, H1N1 circulates every year. And we, what we don't want to have happen if this becomes endemic is that you have all of the people who die of the flu already every year. And then you would have another large group of people on top of that that would die of, of this every year. And we just want to stop that from happening. So endemic means it becomes something that dies down during the summer or goes to different parts of the world and then comes back around every year. Okay, so a good example of something that is an end, uh, sorry, an epidemic is like in certain areas of Africa, they are still dealing with things like malaria and things we don't see here anymore. But to them, that's something that's common to them, right? Right, and and even even an epidemic of, uh, of like cholera, or some of the other, or even things like E. coli, like you keep hearing about where there's a contamination of the food. But if it's kept within a national boundary, it's still an epidemic. Okay. And so pandemic, you guys, it's very important you realize pandemic does not mean panic. It does right. not mean plague and instant death. Like you said, the purest form of that word means it's in more than one country. It's over borders. And um, there are a lot of things that are pandemics, AIDS, HIV the flu, the common cold, um, all of these things. It just means that it's affecting more than one country at the same time. And I, I think that a lot of people don't understand that. So like you said, when the World Health Organization announced it was a pandemic, I feel like that was the day the world lost its ever loving mind and started buying all the groceries and the toilet paper because they didn't understand that pandemic doesn't mean the world is ending and the sky is falling. It just means, hey, several countries are dealing with the same sickness at the same time. It's the same thing with state of emergency. I've seen a lot of comments about, I just don't understand why they declared a state of emergency for two people. Well, a state of emergency doesn't necessarily mean that the situation has gotten out of control either. It is an administrative task that governments have to do in order to unlock federal funding. Yeah. Uh, or unlock the Stafford Act. Uh, so it's it's really more of an administrative thing, but it sounds really scary. It does sound really scary, but when you break it down like that, it um, a state of emergency just means that then they are allowed to ask for, for funds statewide. Um, and then also it gives um, our mayors and our governors and our local leaders a little bit more power than they normally have so that they can do things that they might need to do. Um, so when President Trump uh, said there's a state of emergency for America, it's not a reason to panic. He's just basically saying now the Federal Reserve is open. People can get money if they need it. People can get help if they need it. And your local governor can say, we're going to close our restaurants and we, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. Things they may not normally have power to do for this. Yes, and right. And for small businesses, it's important to know that a one of these state of emergencies is required if you're wanting to get SBA loans um, as a result of what's going on in the world right now, um, then that also requires a state declaration of uh, state of emergency. Mm -hmm. And just to quell some of the panic with state of emergencies, just think of when you when you see certain states in our country, sometimes ahead of time, they know a hurricane is coming, they know a blizzard is coming. They'll declare a state of emergency before the weather or the inclement weather has even hit your state, just mm -hmm. in case. So they know a hurricane is coming, they know a snowstorm's coming, they declare that state of emergency days at a time, just in case your guys are hit pretty hard, then your state can ask the Federal Reserve for some money to help you guys out. It's purely administrative, just like she said. So these words that are being thrown around in the media are not scary. They sound scary. People are panicking. There is the mob mentality. We all have that lizard brain. Um, all humans have that lizard brain from back when we were cavemen and we had to do things to survive, the fight or flight and all that. But none of this is scary. Um, the virus is scary, but the words that are being thrown around in media, let me rephrase that, <laughs> the words that they're throwing around. So 
they're just doing what they can do to protect us. Um, so do you want to talk about why a lot of the states are closing non-essential businesses? So remember back to what I said about this endemic. Um, so that's one of the things we're trying to do is, is keep it from becoming endemic. Uh, but the other thing that we're trying to do is you'll hear people talking about flattening the curve. And flattening the curve basically means that um, if you do not um, keep people away from each other, then things will spread and more people will get them. And if you have a large number of people um, and, and you have something new where you have not, you don't have herd immunity or you don't have a lot of vaccinated people that are, you know, putting a big stop sign to what's going around, uh, then it'll blow through a community and it will overwhelm hospitals. And this is what I do for a living is prepare hospitals to continue to operate no matter what's going on outside the doors, be that an earthquake, a blizzard, what's going on now and so the thing is that hospitals don't have unlimited amounts of vents don't have unlimited amounts of oxygen um, and so if everyone gets sick with something at the same time then you have really difficult decisions to make about how you're going to ration care italy is in that situation right now but if you can keep people away from each other it's not going to necessarily completely stop things from going around but you can slow it down enough to where people can come into the hospitals, be treated, released, and another group comes in and another group comes in, and we're not having to make a decision that somebody um, is not going to be able to be helped because of not enough resources. Okay, so um, that makes a lot of sense. I, I hear a lot of people saying, there's two schools of thought. Some folks are panicking. Oh my God, they're closing everything. We're all going to die. And then there's the group of, they can't mess with people's lives. Why are they shutting stuff down? I'm 30, I'm young, it's not gonna affect me. But if you have all of these places still open and all of these people still out there, more people are going to get sick. It just is. Um, whether you're 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, you're still a human sure. being who is capable of spreading a virus and um, I just had a really weird thing pop up on my computer. I don't know what that was. Um, <laughs> it's the government shutting us down. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but just think, like, I keep thinking, I keep thinking akin to like Stephen King's stand because that's my genre that I like to read. But the way he described it in that book was one person got on an airplane, came in contact with 10 people. Those 10 people came in contact with 100 people. So now you got 1,000 people who each one of them are coming in contact with 10 people. Now you got, what, 100,000 people? So that's why non-essential businesses are being closed down. Not to inconvenience you, excuse you, you selfish entitled person. <laughs> Oh, and by the way, I'm going to be pretty frank tonight with a lot of uh, my thoughts and feelings on this. So for those of you that are used to my tough love, you're going to like this video. But um, it's not to inconvenience you or because your favorite movie just came out or you wanted to go out to eat. And it's also not to scare everybody and act like we're all going to die. It's just to keep us from congregating in huge mobs. And thousands of people getting this virus, whether you're young and you can survive it or not, you can pass it on. And also, I have heard, and this is true, you can have this and be passing it without um, showing signs or being sick. Yes. So, of course, this is still very new to all of us. So the data is still coming together. And uh, But one of the things that seems to be coming a very strong uh, amount of evidence is that there is a large number of asymptomatic spreaders um, and asymptomatic spreaders basically are feel perfectly fine have no idea that they have a virus but they are capable of spreading it to others um, and it's not just the elderly too it's young people with uh, with very common illnesses such as asthma and diabetes that are at risk here and also if your healthcare system is overwhelmed then you know other things don't stop happening people still have heart attacks car accidents everything else and so, you know, really, I'm not saying this to worry you, but I'm also saying that you do need to care um, and you should be prepared and you should be thinking about the big picture because there is impacts that, that will ripple down to everybody, not just the elderly. Mm -hmm. So if they had kept everything open and going the way it is, we would have it spread exponentially over time. Because like I said, you just have to think about how many people one person can come into contact a day. And that goes out like a 
um, spiral effect. Um, so if everything was open, that would be happening. But like Esmeralda said, if we had way too many people sick at the same time in the hospital, they're going to have to start making hard decisions on who gets the incubator, who gets to live and who gets to die. But again, then somebody has a house fire and they need the ICU and there's no room for them. Somebody, small child um, that has asthma or other diseases needs an intubator. Um, am I saying they're intubated? They need to be intubated. There you go. <laughs> they need to be intubated. But just all these other emergencies, like you said, it doesn't stop. The world doesn't stop for a virus, but we can close certain things down and try to control it a little bit better, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I think I want to touch a little bit more on the endemic. So an endemic is a virus or an illness in a certain area that can come back over time. And a good example of that is the common flu, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, it's endemic. Yeah, it's endemic um, because it comes back all the time. The one thing we need to also talk about, I think, um, the word novel is being thrown around with this virus a lot. That just means new, right? Right. So there's various families or categories of viruses out there. Um, and many of them have names that have been around for a long time. Like uh, this one has a, a name that has, has been used for hundreds of years to describe certain types of viruses. But we get new strains. And so I've been seeing a lot of social media activity about, well, this can't be novel. It can't be new. I'm seeing the name of this on the back of, of, of a can of Lysol, for example. But um, that's basically just saying that this family of, of virus has been around before. But this particular strain is new. And that does matter because the body is unfamiliar with it, which changes how we react to it. If we've encountered something before, it, it, the body tends to be a little bit uh, more not it's savvy on how to deal with it. But if it's never dealt with something before, it might throw the whole kitchen caboodle at you. And that's where some people are getting into trouble because their immune systems are just attacking everything, including their healthy bodies. Um, and so, yeah, th but that's what novel means. It means it's new and it's, it affects the body differently than something that's been around. It also doesn't have a, a vaccine and that's important as well. So, I mean, obviously, when something's been around for a while, a vaccine will be developed and less people will be worried about it. Okay. So, it's just like how every year we can get a flu shot and the next year comes back a little bit different. Because just like we learn how to create viruses to fight the, or sorry, what's the word I'm looking for? Vaccines. <laughs> Vaccines to fight the viruses. Thank you. There's all these words. Um the viruses learn how to change to fight the vaccines because they they are also microorganisms and things. They want to live too. They want to survive too. So they learn how to change also. Um, I think the best example, and I don't want to talk about this too much because it's pretty scary and I don't want to freak people out, but the 1918 influenza or better known as the Spanish flu, it came in. It was here for a little while. Bunches of people got sick. People got better. It went away. Everybody thought it was over with. And it came back different. And that was when it became a death sentence and killed people. And you want to keep that from happening as well. You want to keep a virus. Um, you don't want this to go away and come back even worse, right? Yeah, if we can fizzle it out, um, then, then we have less of that risk of that mutation happening and it becoming a stronger, better equipped Germ. And if you guys really, really do like science, if you guys are like nerds or interested or anything, you really like science and you want to learn about um, a lot of different viruses and all these different words and what they mean, um, I'm going to give a shout out real quick to a really good podcast that I enjoy. Esmeralda knows I talk about this podcast all the time and Holly and Tim and Jamie, I'm like, you guys got to listen to this. It's called This Podcast Will Kill You. The two hosts on this podcast will kill you are both, I'm going to say the word wrong, but they're endemeniologists. Uh, maybe. Uh, entomologists? Yes, yeah, entomologists. They're diseaseologists, and they both have PhDs. Um, so, entomologist, I think, is the bug scientist. Then that's not the right word. Epidemiologists? Yes, epidemiologists. Epidemiologists. <laughs> yes, they're epidemiologists, and they're diseaseologists, and they, both girls have a PhD. 
I say girls, they're in their 30s. They're, they're doing field work right now. But they cover dif a different disease every week on their podcast. And they started with the flu uh, influenza of 1918. They've covered the one that we're currently going through right now. Um, and they discuss a lot of the science and the biology behind it. They discuss the history and the, so the, the social climate at the time these things hit, what people did to react to it that made it worse or made it better. It's a really good podcast to listen to, I think, right now in today's climate, because you can listen and be like, well, these people shouldn't have done that. Maybe that's why we're doing things this way now today. So, um, okay. So there's some things that we can do to keep ourselves and our families safe. But in addition to keeping ourselves and our families safe, we're not going outside, like I said, that that wave pattern, you're not affecting 10 people who affect 10 people who affect 10 people. One of these things is self-isolation. Why is that so important? Just keeping you away from other people, because if you're one of those asymptomatic spreaders, um, then they're not going, you're not going to be uh, spreading it. The current, the, the term is called r not, and that's kind of a, a measure of how much, uh, how much, how much, hello, how many more people one person could infect if they come across people. And at this point, this, what we're dealing with now has an r not. I've heard numbers from the mid twos to the threes, which means every one person um, is giving it to between two and three and a half, four people. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's just what you don't want to do. You just don't want it growing because then that number, it just keeps growing and it keeps doubling and, and it just becomes out of control. Yeah. So definitely stay home. And also so that you don't get it because, you know, if you have diabetes or you have asthma or you're on an immunosuppressant heart disease i mean these are common they talk about underlying illnesses well yeah but those are common like a lot of people have asthma and diabetes and heart disease so you don't want that you just stay yeah. stay home don't deal with it yeah and that's that's important to remember too it's not just the old people and some of the underlying conditions that can make this worse are things you wouldn't think of. Hypertension, high blood pressure is one of them, being obese even. And let's face it, I'm a little overweight, so I'm probably obese. Me, 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 me. <laughs> I like to eat my food. And I also have high blood pressure. I'm on medication for it, and it's treated. But if I were to get sick and it were to rise exponentially, my medication wouldn't be able to work. So think about things like that. It's not just the old farts, people. It's a lot of us, your fat friends. <laughs> Your friends with diabetes, your friends with hypertension, your friends with asthma, um, your friends who have a low immune system. Just, you know, we all have those friends who like every year get sick 10 times a year because for whatever reason, their body just like doesn't fight off illness. Um, yeah. There's a lot of people that this can affect. And to think that just because it doesn't affect you, you don't care enough that you're going to go out in the world and spread it. I personally think is a little asshole. -y. Pardon me, but it is. And it's a little it's self entitled and um, it really bothers me. Yeah. Um, I think we should all look at how they handled this in South Korea. I mean, they took their self isolation very seriously. They all wore their masks and their um, numbers are very, very low. And they're getting better very quickly because they're not entitled over there. Or maybe they are, but they didn't act like it now, right? Right. Um, so can it only be an underlying issue for coronavirus? We have a question. I should not have said that word. Whoops. <laughs> if you guys haven't noticed, we're trying to stay away from certain verbiage in the video. Um, I think one little slip might be okay. So is uh, pneumonia an underlying well, pneumonia is a complication. So uh, people who are dealing with, uh, that's the people who are winding up in the ICU um, and the people who are sadly passing away are people who, where it uh, stops just being a dry cough and fever and it starts to settle into the lungs. And they're saying this just very thick mucus in the lungs. And so one of the things I have in my pandemic preparedness kit um, is a, um, is mucinex because if i was to get start to feel sick i would start taking mucinex to avoid anything going down into the into the lungs and uh and causing pneumonia obviously uh, it could still happen but that's one of the things i have is to keep myself as healthy as possible in my kit 
Okay. All right, let me check my, we have a little outline <laughs> that we're working off of to make sure we touch everything. Um, so if you do have to go outside for any reason and not follow self-isolation, there's a thing called social distancing. Can you explain that to us? So stay away uh, from other people by at least six feet. Um, don't shake hands. Um, then there's also don't touch your face or your nose or your eyes or anything. That one's things. hard for me. Yeah. And that's one of the things where, you know, they say, well, masks are, are only 95% effective. That's why they're called N95. So then they're not 100% effective. Well, yeah, but for some people, if it keeps you from putting your your hands on your face, it's helpful. But then some people, it makes them itch their face more and then it increases their risk. Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those things. I've been I've been trying to snap myself with a rubber band every time I touch my face. You might have seen it earlier on uh, where I was, my nose itched and I went to grab and then I put my hand down and I, I brought up a Kleenex. Uh, that's because I'm trying to be very mindful about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually have been yelling at myself in public. Um, <laughs> actually, I don't even leave the house that much. Um, this self-isolation thing for me is quite frankly a dream come true. Because um, I'm normally I work from home. I'm this, I'm from it. Um, but we did have to go in search of and forage for food today and toilet paper, which we found both. So we're good. We're set for a while. We won't be leaving the house except for the post office. But um, we had to hit several stores to get what we needed. And um, I kept saying, stop touching your face, Star, like really loud. And Keith is like, geez. And I'm like, if I say it really loud and people stare at me, I'll stop. <laughs> um, and then, like, I wanted to mention the six feet thing. There is this new phenomenon that is, like, amazing to me so normally if we're at the post office and we're in line the person behind me is up my butt or if you're at the grocery store and you're trying to pay the person behind you is already like coming up and you're like excuse me i'm putting in my pin number people are really following the social distancing there was a, like three people in line at the post office and they were spaced out all through the building people are staying away from you at the grocery store and i'm like can we be like this always why did it take this to teach people personal space well and it's hard because like the the three feet or six feet away is is easier than like shaking hands it is awkward when people who i know and i want to give them a hug or shake their hand and right now i'm like hey let's bump elbows or you know people are like doing things like putting their hand over their heart and and things like that i mean social distancing and some things are, are harder than others and to me it's those handshakes and i'm a touchy-feely latin so it's like we we hug we kiss we say hello it's man it's tough to see somebody we like and just be like hey yeah, no, it's so easy for me. I'm like, thank goodness everybody finally has learned personal space. <laughs> <Today I'm playing. laughs> All right, let's uh, peek at the outline again. Okay, so let's talk about proper hand washing techniques. I know there's some songs you can sing and how long you should do it and how exactly you should do it if you want to teach us. So um, 20 seconds is good. Soap and water is actually really, um, really the best thing because soap has what they call a hydrophilic and a hydrophobic uh, molecule. So one side likes to break down fats and um, what we're dealing with now actually has a, a fatty outer layer called an envelope that, um, that the soap can actually attach to. And then it kind of pops that outer layer and that inner layer is um, moisture so then the, the water loving side of the soap molecule will then suck it out and run it down the drain but to do that you can't just kind of you know put a little soap in your hands rub 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 and wash off you got to get between your nails I'm not wearing my uh, my wedding ring yes I am married but you know I don't want anything stuck between uh, rings and other things so they're even saying you know don't wear rings wash your hands real good scrub underneath your nails I'm keeping my nails sh short um, and green for the holiday. Uh, so, you know, but really focus on each finger, the front and the back of your hand constantly. Now, when is the hand sanitizer useful? That's if you can't get your hands on soap and water. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, bar soap is great. And even if you can bring your own bar soap, it's even better because you're not grabbing something someone else touched. But germs do not like soap, uh, but they do like the plastic top of, of the plastic dispensers. So um, that's why, you know, good old fashioned bar soap is actually the best of all the soaps of all. You see my face, cause I'm a germaphobe and bar soap bothers the hell out of me because I feel like everybody's 
Um, so what, it, it doesn't like once it contacts that the soap, though those molecules kill it. Versus that plastic top, a plastic surface is something where uh, uh, you know a germ can live for quite some time. Oh, bar soap bothers me. <laughs> but uh, Keith and I are both thermophobes. Just so wash our, your hands. Just wash. Them. Just wash. Them. <laughs> what are they saying? Wash your damn hands. But we use like. It's right we, here. I have it on my button. What does it say? Stop. We it's use like our elbow or like this part of us to squirt it. And then we also do um, Clorox wipes on our plastic pumps all over the house and stuff. But we, That's a good idea. We've been like this for years because we are germaphobes. So um, anything you've ever heard me talk about, about how we take care of our, our thrifting stuff that we bring in and all that, do it now. Um, pretend we're all surgeons. Wash up to your elbows. Sing happy birthday. Um, there's a lot of memes going around with different songs you can sing. Um, but make sure, like she said, get in. Here, a lot of people don't do this. You want to get in there because that's that's where stuff hides. Um, you want to get the bats. You want to scrub with your nails. Don't just like that. People that just do right. this, they're they're the ones that are the petri dishes. Um, for those of you that are saying you have really really dry hands from washing too much, um, hold on. I'm gonna grab something. I'm gonna keep talking. But I have a hand soap that I've been using for year hand soap hand cream. I've been using this for years because back when I did work in the healthcare field, I had to wash my hands approximately 1,353 times a day, you know, <laughs> and my hands would get so red and raw. So this is what I've always used. It's called Gold Bond Ultimate Healing Hand Cream. You can find it at Walmart. Trust me, if you have to go out for groceries, please, please self-isolate. Don't leave your house. But if you have to go out for groceries um, or if you're on Amazon and you want to order it, it's like three dollars for this tiny purse size, but they also have a larger size you can keep in your house. I just like the purse size, but um, it repairs dry problem hands and it also washes last not washes it lasts through washes. So you can put this on in the morning and then wash your hands like five times and then you'll need more. So you're not constantly putting it on. But I used to get caught. I used to call it my dragon scales because I would turn red and scabby because you have to I mean I work in a nursing home so I washed my hands in between each person I took care of and each task I did for each person so they would get really bad so this is um this is what I use you guys can probably find it on Amazon if not I guarantee you it's still at Walmart nobody's clearing the lotion and makeup shelves trust me <laughs> um so yeah don't forget your fingertips too I see someone talking about that um, don't bite your nails right now. Don't bite your nails ever. It's gross. Do you know what lives under there? But right now, more than ever, please don't bite your nails. Please don't bite your nails. Um, okay, so we've already talked about most of this, I think, just naturally. Yeah. Uh, okay, so do you want to tell us what these symptoms are? Because I feel like a lot of people misinformation about that so if you could tell us what the symptoms are and when you should go to the hospital so um, the the fever well again there's a lot of people that have it and don't have any symptoms at all and then you have some people who just feel a little bit more tired than normal uh, but the the classic symptoms are a fever uh, over 100.7 uh, and a dry cough and if that's all you got, then call your doctor. Do not go. Please do not go. Because then you you can, you know, really just don't. Uh, call your doctor and say, I've got this going on. And they're probably going to suggest over-the-counter stuff like for normal uh, colds and flu and such. Uh, when it becomes a problem is when you start experiencing shortness of breath. That's never okay. If, you, if you're feeling winded, doing things that you normally don't get winded on, that's when you're going to be like, yeah, now it's time to go to that ER. You don't want to ignore that and let pneumonia set in because once it does, this particular pneumonia is pretty bad. Mm -hmm. And also, um, I don't know if it's up and running yet, but I know the president announced in one of his addresses that uh, they're setting up something on Google where you can um, put in what symptoms you have and possibly talk to a doctor like this virtually to see if you need to go to the hospital. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of things like that out there. There's a lot of good info, uh, informatic memes and stuff that are out there that show, like, um, if you've got the sniffles, 
Um, that's not a typical uh, symptom of what we're dealing with right now. Um, also, um, if you have a productive cough, that's not a typical symptom. Uh, sore throat is not. Um, now, that, nothing to say you can't have two things at once too. So you can have a, a, a cold and what's going around right now. Mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, those are the the big three: the fever, shortness of breath, and dry cough. And just to let everyone know, uh, dry cough is when you're coughing and nothing's coming up. And a productive cough is when you have all the phlegm and the, the stuff that's causing that noise in your lungs and you cough up all that aloogies and stuff to be uh, used later for people. Um, so let's talk now about... Um, let's talk about sanitizing stuff we put in. One more thrifting. I know you said you had some tips about washing clothes. So yeah, so one thing that some really great guidance has come out, and a lot of people think that they're do that they're sanitizing their clothes when they're washing them, but that warm environment with the water is actually kind of a nice little petri dish. Um, one of the best things you can do is actually to put it uh, is wash, yes, but also to put it in the dryer and turn that dryer heat to at least 150 degrees. And this is also kind of useful if you buy something new with tags and you're afraid to uh, to wash it, um, then you can put it in the dryer at 150 degrees. And also, um, like I, I actually bought something because my husband's an ER nurse and uh, you know the likelihood of, of him having to self isolate um, in the house is actually high. So I bought something, it's actually in the thumbnail. Um, but it is a, um, it's called a, a V-ray scanner and it's, um, it's a UV light. And um, I can take something that uh, that's new in the package and scan it with this little doodad. It cost me about $200 and five seconds of exposure to that UV light kills a wide spectrum of, now I can't sit back down, sorry, a wide spectrum of things. So like if I'm buying a, a hard good merchandise, I think I might just zap it with that for about five seconds on every surface. New with tag stuff. I would spot clean and throw in that dryer and then um, anything that is uh, pre-owned, I would wash in as high a temperature as possible. Some people talk about putting stuff in the freezer. Um, that is actually not helpful when it comes to um, the, some of the germs that we're dealing with right now. They like the cold. Um, you definitely, um, the heat is what's really, because think about it, that fatty hour later we talked about, well, what does fat like to do when you turn up the heat? Um, when you, when you, uh, exercise, you get hot, you burn fat. Uh, it's just, that's the same thing. So you want to break that fatty layer down. Yeah. So, um, and if you don't want to spend $200 for that, for a doodad, then, you know, anything you might be buying right now, somebody else might've sneezed on it before and it could be on there for a while. Then wipe it down with a Clorox wipe. Some other things that are great for that, for germ busting on a, on a hard surface thing you might buy. If you can't get your hands on it alcohol that's at least 60 percent um vinegar uh mixture of uh tea tree oil and eucalyptus oil all of this has been in medical journals and proven to have uh you know characteristics that you know kill germs so for to reiterate just real quick if you can wash it wash it in hot water if it's new with tags um you want to throw it in the dryer if you can't put it in the dryer if it's like hard porous, slice all wipes are okay, alcohol. And um, I sanitize a lot of stuff with my steamer, which is over 150 degrees. So um, just be and mindful. The sun, the sun is, the, is good too. You can put something in the sunlight and the sun will also break down that fatty layer. Yep. So just, I, I want everyone to keep these things in mind for all times because I'm always on here touting, even long before the current climate and what's going on. I was always touting to people that we wash everything, we dry everything, we sanitize everything, we have a steamer. Because even when we don't have a global pandemic going on, I, here's how I said it to my children, because they, I wanted them to understand how imperative it is that you're cleaning your hands and washing things. Not everyone is hygienic. And there are some gross people out there who will scratch their genital area or the bathroom and not wash their hands, pick their nose. And then they go into the thrift store and they're touching the cart and the clothes and the hangers and all that stuff that you're going in after them to touch or the grocery store or in the movie theater. Um, so that's why it's important to 
be hygienic at all times because not everyone else around you is. Some people are really, really gross and they're touching things in public that you're down touching. Yeah, and, and sanitize that cart. <coughs> sure. That wasn't right. Cart. Sorry. Good that job. Was... Look at that. Look at that. That was a perfect cough right there. That's yeah, that, so that's from years in the healthcare field, but that was a productive cough, y'all. I have like some allergy things going on right now. But speaking of that, someone in the, in the chat said it doesn't make sense that this has a dry cough with it because pneumonia is typically a productive cough. Yeah, but uh, this particular pneumonia, it's not productive because it sticks and it stays. They're doing, I mean, I don't know how medical terminology I can get, but they're doing autopsies. And they're finding the sputum in the lungs is just so thick and so sticky that it's dry because it just won't come up. That's I'm just, just sorry to, to be, yeah, it, that's why. That's exactly why. So it's sticking it. Yeah, well, I, I would just talk about people scratching their balls and then touching stuff. So <laughs> I think we're pretty okay. <laughs> Sometimes you have to be gross to get the point across to people. Um, so we talked about how to sterilize and sanitize things coming in your home. And this should be something you guys are doing all the time. Let me reiterate that. You should be mindful of being hygienic and cleaning things that come into your home all the time. Here's something that I have practiced since I was a young child. My mom was an RN and my dad was the head of radiology. And ever since I was a small child, and I know Holly practices this with her children too, her son. There's one son, not children, plural. But anytime we would leave our home and come back in, you had to wash your hands. That was the rule. So if you went outside to play, if you went to the store, if you went anywhere, whenever my family came back in the home when I was a child, the first thing everybody had to do was go wash their hands. And that was a rule. Um, and my mom just, and my dad both, but mostly my mom, because she was an RN, put it in my head that the germs that you have inside of your home our germs that your family is used to and you clean your home, if you're a cleanly person, you're fine. The minute you step outside of your door, you're getting everybody else's grossness and everybody else's germs on you. So when you come back into your home, you wanna wash your hands. And I know Holly practices that as well and she doesn't really get sick. So um, I think it's a good rule. If you leave your house and you come back inside, wash your hands. But while you're out and about, wash your hands as well. In between thrift stores, if you can't get to soap and water, Use hand sanitizer, like you said. That's what hand sanitizer is not there to replace hand washing. It's not a substitution for hand washing. It is if you're in a bind, if you can't get to a sink and soap and water, the hand sanitizer will carry you over until you can, right? Right, exactly. And the so, difference is soap will wash the, uh, the remnants away. The sanitizer will kill it, but you still have germy hands. It's just dead. So you've got germ carcasses on your body. You don't want that. Get them, flush them down the drain, man. That's what you want. Yeah, wash them germ carcasses off your hands. Um, yeah, you don't want either. You're not a funeral home for that stuff, people. So when you when you can't get to hand soap though or water, it'll it'll tide you over. We have one thrift store. We're not thrifting right now. We are definitely on isolation for about a month, but. Um, the first one that we typically go to doesn't have a public restroom. So we'll use sanitizer after that one. When we get to yeah. the second location, they have a sink and bathroom. So we'll go in there and wash before and after thing there. We're German first. We should be doing what we're doing because, um, I think right now is when we all need to look at germaphobes and say, I keep saying germaphobe because if you guys didn't see my live show last week, I was trying to say germaphobe and I said germaphobe and Casey wouldn't let it die and he kept making fun of me. And uh, we're at a week later and still on the phone. He's like, how's the germaphobe? <laughs> so now it's like part of my uh, vernacular. But um, So we need to be cleaning everything. So I wouldn't personally suggest going out to the thrift stores. I know many people still are. I guess if you're practicing the social distancing, um, I would sanitize the cart handle before you touch it. Mm -hmm. I would make sure that none of that stuff comes into your home until it's been cleaned and sanitized. Wash your hands. Wash your damn hands. Um, but if, if you want to stay at home and not go out, um, there's many ways you can get inventory to you, delivered to you. I would still treat that like you just brought it in from the thrift store, right? Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Yeah. So if you order online, I would still, um, I would still, you know, sanitize as well. The same way that we talked about earlier, you know, cardboard boxes, plastic containers, some of those things can, they're being handled by a lot of people. There was somebody at a post office that, you know, came down with this stuff. So um, yeah, just cause you're getting it from, uh, from star and, uh, and Casey's uh, online store, uh, which has liquidation lots that, you know, it's not, it's not, Casey and Star, we have to worry about, but all the people who handled that package until it got to you. <laughs> yeah, and we don't, you know. we don't actually see and touch all the merchandise either. True, yeah. So that's true. Um, somebody said the uh, beer distributors are open, not in Pittsburgh. So wherever you are in PA, more power to you. I had to go online and order some alcohol because I can't get it anywhere here. And um, it, I think alcohol is definitely essential at this time for most people. I wouldn't suggest uh, blackout drunk or day drinking or turning into an alcoholic, but sometimes a glass of wine or a drink can take the edge off. Yep. Um, CDC. So, said, I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say about the CDC saying it has to be over 60% alcohol, right? The sanitizer. Yeah, so if you're going to uh, use your liquor to sanitize your hands, it has to be Everclear, basically, and it has to be the good, really strong Everclear. And just so, so regular you know, alcohol is not 60%. The Bath and Body Works is 68. Just barely above the limit. Yep. 68. But it is above the limit. So if it that's all you've got in your house right now, use it up. Yep. I, can I give some more suggestions for what I think resellers need to be thinking about with regards to what's going on to kind of protect their business? Sure. I'm going to um, address one more thing on the thing real quick. Um, we have a beer distributor two blocks from my house and it is closed. So it might just be where we're at. They're closed because they're saying three hours north of Pittsburgh, they're open. They are advertising around here, though, that they're allowing um, before. I guess this was illegal or whatever, but they're allowing... Um, Places like DoorDash and Uber Eats to deliver beer and things to people. So certain places are open, but only for delivery drivers here. Um, but I can tell you that everything here is shut down unless it's a grocery store. It is a ghost town out there. All right, go ahead. So a couple of things I want resellers to pay attention to, just in case um, something, God forbid, were to happen to you. Uh, make sure that uh, that the business could continue to go on. I would hate for somebody to get sick, recover, but they were in the hospital for a little while and husband or wife or whoever doesn't know the passwords to get in, doesn't know how to print a label, doesn't know how to do anything. So basic business continuity. Um, if something were to happen to you, does uh, somebody else know how to do what they need to do to help you keep your store open? So this is a good time to cross train somebody. Um, spouse, sister, brother, anything saying, um, you know, can you at least be able to log into my store and notify my customers what's going on, uh, provide customer service, that kind of thing. So just start thinking about the things that you do every day and see if you can have uh, either instructions written down or cross train some people in case you do get sick. And this is good in general because something can happen to you at any time and um, and you, you don't want to have your business die or you... Uh, you lose your status and you get a suspended because of packages that didn't go out because people didn't know how to log into your account. That's just a big thing I want everyone to pay attention to is just think about the things that you do every day and find out if there's anyone close to you that knows how to do it in case you can't for a while. Yeah, that's really good for any time too. Like you said, you could break your leg, you could get in a car accident. I touch my face a lot, you guys, but I am at home and I have washed my hands. <laughs> Everything in our house is super clean. Like I think we're super, super meticulous about germs here. Um, but yeah, that's really good advice because um, like we love each other, but I'm going to tell you if something were to happen to both of us at the same time, we're screwed because no one else knows our business but us. Um, so that's good advice. Um, so, Star, what are you picking up for your store? That because you think that what's going on might actually affect what people are buying. I mean, there's just not gouging people. Please do not buy uh, hand sanitizer and toilet and paper for five hundred dollars. I mean, um, I just, I just, it's illegal and it'll get you suspended. It's not worth your account. Um, you know, don't do that. But that, what are some things that, that you're trying to pick up to say, you know what, in this situation, I think there might be buyers out there looking for these things. Um, well, right off the top of my head, we are still listing our remotes and those are still moving um, really well. Actually, they're doing better than they were before. 
So I think people are maybe pulling out old DVD players and uh, old TVs and thinking, I don't have a remote to this anymore. Um, so I would think anything like that, people are going to be stuck in their homes. Um, so you want to have like small handheld games, uh, electronics, remotes, board games, puzzles. A lot of people are doing really well with puzzles right now and crafting supplies. Um, but just think about what someone would do if they were stuck inside their house for two weeks with nothing else to do. Of course, we're all going to stream Netflix and we're all going to binge our shows, but um, people are going to be looking for things to do with their family, like puzzles and board games. Um, is there anything in particular you're stocking up on? I'm also I'm thinking about long-term things um, as well. Um, I'm pretty sure in, in nine months we're going to have a baby boo. <laughs> so maybe start picking up baby stuff. Uh, yeah, and maternity so, yeah, so love. Yeah, so uh, I think the baby boom is coming, and then in, in 13 years, you'll have uh, uh, quarantine teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> Quar <laughs> Quarantines. <laughs> Quarantine. Yeah, but uh, teenagers. But no, um, the, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about um, those things to keep us busy and occupied. I'm, I'm thinking about some, if you have access to reasonably priced um, you know, non-gouging essentials and necessary stuff. That's great. If you sell supplements and vitamins, you know, a lot of people thinking about, you know, maybe I had to boost my vitamin C or whatever. If you've got access to that and can legally sell it, that's probably not a bad idea. Um, but yeah, that the keeping people entertained thing is going to be a big deal for the next step uh, because we don't know if it's two weeks. It could be longer than that. It could be a, it could be a while before things go back to normal. It could be to up to two months until things go back to normal. Um, yeah, or maybe sadly longer than that, depending on what we're dealing with. So lots of things to keep us occupied: crafting kits, cross stitch, needlepoint, um, all that kind of stuff is stuff I'm looking for to add to the store right now. Yeah, Donna. Uh, and, go ahead. Sorry. No, that was it. Donna's saying novels and DVDs. Um, yes and no. I DVDs and novel and books have been run down to the bottom so hard. I think it's going to take a lot to bring them back. And I only say that because, like someone like me and Keith, we have Prime, uh, Hulu, Netflix, Shutter, and uh, Disney Plus. So we're not really going to be looking for DVD. And I think that most people these days have kind of streaming services. I don't know. Maybe people will start buying DVDs and books. So, um, and like you said, crochet, just think outside of the box. Like two months from now, if we're still stuck inside, I might take up needlepoint because you're going to be out of things to do. You're going to be looking for different things to do. Um, one other thing I think is really super, super important right now is the uh, bread and butter items. And I think that a lot of people are going to be out of work for a while. A lot of families are going to take a huge economical hit. A lot of families are going to be missing paychecks. So when we come out the other side of this, those of you that have all of those wonderful expensive bolo items, people aren't going to be able to afford those anymore. They're going to be looking for the value $20 gap, $20 shipped American Eagle gap and old Navy jeans. They're going to be looking for the men's and the women's shirts to go to job interviews or go back to work. They're going to be like 12, 14, $16. Um, I'm not saying rice to the bottom by any means. And I'm not saying look for the fast nickels and I'm not saying value or price things below their value. And I'm not saying sell poop or crap. Don't load your stores with faded glory from Walmart. But I think the bread and butter items are going to be so much more valuable because more people are going to be looking for the run of the mill. These are the things I can afford instead of the Robert Grahams and the Eileen Fisher and, the, and I never say her name right, Donna Von Schurstenberg. <laughs> I can't say her name. Can you? Donna Von Furstenberg, I think. Yeah. Von like Furstenberg. That. But um, there will still be people in the world who will have money. Don't get me wrong. I don't think the 1% are going to lose their money through this. But the vast majority of online shoppers are, you know, middle class folks who are going to be missing some paychecks and not have as much money. So um, the bread and butter items, the used clothing is going to have a, I really think it's going to have a boom. Maybe not right now, but like you said, long term. And interview clothes, because, you know, it, the economy has been going up for a while. And people, uh, so, you know, people haven't had to look for work. Uh, they may be needing that tie or that blazer that so that they can go to an interview again that they haven't been in in a while. 
Um, yeah. Someone said vanity isn't going to be a big deal. I beg to differ only because folks like myself that are going to continue to do videos are still going to need to wear makeup and do our hair to go on on our YouTubes. You're still going to have beauty vloggers and Amazon, um, not Amazon, beauty vloggers and Instagram models who are still going to want to look pretty even if they're not leaving the house. They're going to be doing their hair and their makeup every day. They're still going to be ordering makeup and hair supplies to do tutorials. Um, for those of us that vanity was important before all of this that are now staying home and not media influencers, then yes, who cares what you look like. But for those of us that take pictures and are on YouTube all the time and our social media presence, um, we're not just going to suddenly start looking ugly. We still want to be pretty. So we're still going to order makeup and hair supplies and stuff like that. Um, and it may be even more important. Like you got a lot of teenagers stuck at home and bored. They might start experimenting with different ways to do their eye makeup to show off to their friends. So, you know, actually maybe makeup and hair stuff isn't a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I know I told you uh, uh, when we went out today, we found we found pretty much a lot of really, we found ground meat. <laughs> Toilet paper, we hit the jackpot here. But I, I also bought, I told you I bought some eyeliner. <laughs> so I can still have makeup to wear every day for my video <laughs> while I'm stuck inside. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah, a hair collar is flying out of people's stores. Look, a lot of women, when we get bored, we do stuff like cut our hair and dye our hair and, you know. Who knows what people are going to do once they start really getting bored inside their house? <laughs> clean. Let's talk about cleaning and sanitizing because that's something we can all be doing. Yeah. I mean, um, we talked about, you know, look at those high touch things inside your house. Um, and that's super important. I mean, there's a lot of things people don't think about light switches, um, the knobs on the on the cabinet doors, um, the mouse on your computer, um, especially if you've had somebody in your house that is sick, um, that has what's going around. Uh, yep, your phone, um, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, you don't you don't want to um, to share it with the rest of your family. I mean, you have will have to be cleaning up behind yourself constantly. Um, or if you're just going to have people over, you you you've run its course. You want to invite people over, be social again. You want to clean everything. Um, and just think about everything you touch just for a while. Just be mindful of the things you touch every day. Um, and uh, it's just it's a lot of things. It's the door handles. It's the the car, um, the steering wheel, the uh, the buttons that make your windows go up and down. Just all those little things that you touch your keyboard. Um, all that stuff. Is, you want to think about those uh, Clorox wipes or, you know, you if you have a UV light thing, you can. I mean, some people have it for like their toothbrush and stuff miniature UV lights, that's always good. Toothbrushes, that's something that gets disgusting. Um, especially, you know, um, if you want to talk, you want to be blunt, you know, actually they're saying that there's some of this junk in people's poop. And guess what happens when you flush the toilet with the toilet seat up? All that stuff goes up in the air. And if you have a toilet in the same room as your toothbrush, <laughs> yeah, go. yeah, I, I've, I've known that for a long, it really bothers me. But yes, if you don't, Shut the lid of your toilet when you flush poop. Um, poop particles get into the air. Particles. Particles. We have a poop particle party. And then they will land on your curling iron and your mm -hmm. toothbrush and mm -hmm. your hairbrush. And the next time you brush your hair, put it in a ponytail and brush your teeth, you just put poop effectively in your hair and in your mouth. So make sure you're shutting the lid and teach everyone in your house to shut that lid when they poop because they literally will fly up into the air. Um, and it's also a good idea. Um, this is what we do anyway. Shut the lid when you flush your poops, <laughs> but just a little bit of Lysol right over the top of the toilet, right after you flush just into the air, because if any of those did float up into the air and you spray, I'm not saying <laughs> you like, don't kill your can, but a couple of sprays into the air. Lysol does tout that it kills germs in the air. So just shut the lid, a couple sprays. It's not hard to train people in your house to do that. They have really nice, not right now, the shelves are wiped out. But they typically have nice smells like orange Lysol, lavender, the meadows. I don't know. But yeah, shut your lid, a couple sprays. Um, like she said, think about all your surfaces. Lysol wipes. Uh, we buy the Walmart brand. It doesn't have to be name brand. Like we legit use Walmart brand Lysol 
and the little wipies in the tub that kill germs. Um, if you can't get a hold of any of that stuff right now, guys, use alcohol. Like we said, if you've got rubbing alcohol, hydrogen um, peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> and um, what I've been doing in the in, in, when we've gone to the store, if the store is out of the wipes for the cart, I've just been taking a little squirt of my own hand sanitizer supply out of my purse. You got it. And got rubbing it. it all over that cart. And, oh, the trick to hand sanitizer. We didn't talk about that. I learned this way back when during the bird flu. The way that works is it dries and kills the germs. So when it's wet, you don't want to keep rubbing till it's dry. You just kind of want to let it dry in the air, right? Mm -hmm. You want to let that alcohol. I know you look stupid when you do it, but they had us all do it in this class. They all had us put on hand sanitizer and do it together. <laughs> But you kind of want to just let it dry. That's how it feels the time. So if, you, if you're at the store and they don't have wipes or whatever, you can always use a squirt. Rub your cart down. Um, and do that in your house. Like, uh, I haven't been using alcohol on things because we're trying to, we can't find any here. And we use it to clean our remote. So we're rationing that. So what I've been doing is just a little dab of hand sanitizer. And that's what I'm rubbing on my thumb. Yeah, and remember those other things that are also uh, great at killing germs. Um, like I said, vinegar, hydrogen peroxide, um, tea tree oil with eucalyptus together, um, and, and you put that in some warm water so the hot water itself is, is good for it. Um, keep in mind that fatty outer layer, so what kills fat, Dawn, uh, is really good for that. Any kind of dish soap is good. Um, any of that stuff is all really great, so you don't have to just go after the the, the most obvious things like the, the bleach wipes. Yeah. There's a lot of things that uh, can kill the germs. So just keep that in mind. And not only now, but anytime anyone in your house gets any kind of common cold or common flu, make sure that everything that person touches is getting disinfected in between. Mm -hmm. um, I can remember, who can remember landlines? <laughs> when I used to get colds or sick when I was a kid, my mom would come behind me like, Everything I touched, but she was an RN, and this is probably where I got my germ firmness from. But if you use the phone, she would always want to clean like the mouthpiece because she'd say, oh, you just breathe in there with your germs. She would <laughs> go behind me on the door handles. Mm -hmm. But um, so, okay, so let's talk a little bit more about business before we let some folks go or some folks. We're going to keep some of you and only let some of you go. Right. So what can you be doing right now? Um, we're stuck inside. Most of us, some of you are still going out and thrifting. Um, just be safe. I, I don't recommend it, but that's only because I always think of the 10 people I'm going to come in contact with who came in contact with a hundred people. And one of them was on a cruise and you never know. Um, but what can you be doing while you're stuck at home? Now um, is the time to go through those death piles. Oh yeah. Get through. I've been exclusively death pile for a while now, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, unfortunately, we just got rid of ours. It took me five months. We didn't source for five whole months. We got rid of our death piles. And now I'm like, oh, what do I do now? <laughs> Whoops. Um, what we've also been doing in this, you can create a death pile for yourself. And I only recommend doing this when you have nothing else to do. But we've been going through a lot of our items that we had in the clearance or the auctions and looking at them and like this should have sold and it should be worth more money it's just that it's so old it was from before we knew how to take good photos mm -hmm. or when the titles were bad so go back through your really old stuff and decide why is it old why is it still there if it's because you took crappy photos and you know better now delete them out of your store pull the item out of your inventory make a pile of 10 of them and redo the photos and relist them and there you've got 10 items to list today and not only does it help because it's got fresh photos, but just the idea of taking it down and re-putting it back up, um, getting a new item number for eBay, for example. I mean, the algorithm seems to really like new. Uh, so that's a way to get fresh eyes on things. I've had things listed for literally over a year because I'm one of these people. It's I'm listed and forget it like forever uh, because my store is really small. And um, if it's been around for a while, I will... Uh, I'll just, without even re-photographing, just take it down, put it back up a couple days later, and bam, it'll sell. It's, like, unbelievable. Yeah. Um, 
we've been going through, like I said, our clearance stuff. If it's still good photos, I put it back in a different title. Yeah. Having a dry throat, reading vocal cross frost. post. Like if you've if if you're eBay only, now's a good time for you to try Mercari or Poshmark. Yeah, someone said that in the chat. So this is the time to for your death piles. Go through your old items, decide why they're old, in them, relist them with different titles, or take your photos over. I just built myself a, a death pile over here of 40 items we have in the store that I was like, who in their right mind thought these pictures were okay? I said, Keith, I'm gonna delete all these and build myself a death pile. Whatever keeps your store active, whatever keeps new items coming in. And then um, cross post, try different platforms. This is the time to spend um, doing all that. Uh, you can work on your social media. I keep telling you guys, it's so super important these days to have social media attached to your business. This is the time to build your Instagram. Um, mm -hmm. What's the clicking noise? I've been hearing it and ignoring it. And now I'm going to mention it. Oh, no. I have no idea. I have no idea what it is either. I don't know. I thought it was something on your end, and I'm like, I'm just going to pretend. But I no, I don't have any click. I don't have any clicking noises on my end. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is either. I was doing a really good job of ignoring. It. Um, don't gouge. We already talked about that. It's not only is it illegal, it makes you a turd. Don't be a turd. Don't be a turd. This is not the time to be a turd. This is the time for humans to be nice to each other. Mm. Follow your routines. I think that's super important. Um, if before this you had a good routine at home and you had a good system that you followed and you did your work every day, don't fall out. Don't let this be an excuse to be like, ah, I panic. Everybody's self isolating. I'm just not going to work. I'm not going to do all my work. I'm not going to stand my routine. And guess who's guilty of that? I have been for about three days not doing what I should be um, because I'm letting this take over my world and I shouldn't. I should just focus, stay to your routines, keep working every single day, keep doing what you do. Sales are probably going to drop. Realistically and honestly, people are probably going to at some point stop shopping or shop less or spend less money and only buy the cheaper things or start lowballing all of us. That's probably going to happen. That routine is that so routine is so important though, uh, because you know I don't want people's emotional health to be struggling with this. If, you know, and if you need to take care of your mental health, and if you're um, if you're deviating from your routine, and especially if you are an extrovert. And being uh, home alone a lot, it, it drains you. It's not like people that, that actually like being it. I mean, you got to worry about that. You got to make sure you keep your mind alert and your emotions good. Because you, you, we don't want a rash of suicides or depression from the social isolation. Reach out to people. Talk to people over the phone. Skype with people. Keep you know, Try to keep your life as normal as possible so you don't go into a fatigue state from what's going on. Yeah, say, yeah. Senior routines. Um, talk to people on the phone again. We used to do that. <laughs> people used to talk on the phone. You can FaceTime people, like you said. Um, you could start a, like, we have a small group of people, Esmeralda and I, that we talk to throughout the day um, in a Facebook chat. You can do one of those with, like, reseller friends. Um, if you come from work, you can create one with your work friends. But just reach out and check on people, too, because your extrovert friends are not okay right now. Mm -hmm. People like me, we're okay. We're, yes, I'm going to check out 10 more books from my virtual library. <laughs> I don't even have to go thrifting. I don't have to move my house at all. What is up? But your extrovert friends are very, very lonely and sad and scared. So check on them. Stay in your routines. Somebody mentioned bookkeeping. Yeah, this is the time. Oh, yeah. To catch up on your taxes and your books. Excuse me. This is the time to do spring cleaning. And here's the other thing, the best part about being a reseller. When you spring clean, you get to sell everything you don't want. Most people spring clean and take those boxes to Goodwill. We can spring clean and list it. So if you're running out of stuff to list, go through your closet and get rid of the clothes you aren't wearing. Go through your kids' clothes. What did they outgrow? Um, go through your 
your cupboards? Do you have Pyrex you don't want or don't use? Do you have plush you can get rid of? You could be spring cleaning your house and all that stuff. Um, yeah, stop panicking, period. There's no reason to panic. There's reason to, to exercise. Prepare. Yeah. Prepare, but don't panic. Prepare, but don't panic. Exercise caution. Um, use your Exercise in general. Exercise in general. That's another thing you need to do. Uh, be as healthy as you can. Eat well and exercise because that way if you do get sick, your body can fight the stuff off better. So, yes, exercise is good. Yeah, and um, this isn't like an excuse to sit in your house and become job of the hut. Just because we're all self-isolating, we shouldn't just turn to eating really bad for us junk food and doing nothing but sitting on the couch, bed, binge, bed, binging on Netflix. Y'all can still go outside. You can yeah, the sunlight, the sunlight's good for this stuff. Yeah, sunlight, sunlight kills the germs. Take a walk outside, play with the dog. Um, yeah, you can still go outside for walks. Don't go to parks. Don't go around crowds. But if you're anything like us, it's a ghost town out there. And Keith and I are going out for walks every night. And we're like the only two people out there. It's really nice. We're getting some sunshine, some fresh air, some exercise. Um, don't isolate yourself in your house. You can still go outside. Don't become job of the hut. <laughs> still try to eat somewhat healthy and exercise. And there's plenty of um, videos out there on YouTube and stuff that you can get to exercise to if, if you usually go to the gym and it's closed. Um, there's plenty of exercise videos out there. There's ones you can pay to stream. There's ones for free. Um, so stay healthy. Stay sane. Stay working, though, because here's the thing. We're going to come out the other side of this eventually. And mm -hmm. do you want to come out the other side of this with double the listings and double the chance of selling items when people get back to work and have money? Or do you want to come out of this with a store you haven't touched in a month with, a you know, less listings, non-activity, nothing's been touched. So when people go back to work and start spending their money, your store is not the one they're looking at because you're not in the algorithm anymore. Right. Yeah. We important. will come out of this. It will yes. happen. There's going to be an end. There's going to be, we're in the tunnel, but we're all going to come out of this tunnel at the end. And people will spend their money. They're, people don't just not spend money. People like to shop. So it'll be different, maybe. But you're only going to have a chance to sell stuff if you keep it in your store. If it's not listed, it's not selling. If, if you're still sitting on a death pile at the end of this, shame on you. You're a hoarder. You're not a reseller. <laughs> All the time in the world right now to be learning, to be learning, not learning, listing. I just read, learn some new languages. Um, but it might be different. Um, drink plenty of water. That's a good advice, too. Um, plenty of water. Practice your social distancing. Check on your friends. Um, I heard take your medication if oh, you yeah. have those underlying conditions and you're non-compliant and you're a diabetic and you're eating sugar uh, and you have high blood pressure and you're eating salt, uh, don't because you want to be as healthy as possible for a lot of reasons. Or eat your salt and take your meds like I do. Sorry. Yes, take your meds because, like, my ER nurse husband's like, you know, I don't know how many people will be like, well, my my diabetes is out of control. Are you taking your meds? No. I just ate a Snickers. <laughs> hey, show us your shirt real quick. I don't know if you can read that. Beavis and Butthead for 2020. TP for and everyone's it says, TP bunghole. for everyone's bunghole. <laughs> I got, how perfect is that? And I got this for my birthday in October, so we didn't know that TP would be such a big commodity. So now that's why I'm wearing it, because, like, how appropriate. The TP shortage of 2020. I also just heard that um, we may be getting a 90-day extension on filing our taxes. That's awesome. But still work on your books while we have some time. Um, your shirt's great. And I know there was – we have notes everywhere. Something else I wanted to bring up. Uh, oh, Amazon did shut down their FBA. 
Except I just swallowed wrong. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> I Good job. Really... Good job. <laughs> Perfect talk. I literally inhaled that instead of drinking it. Um, FBA, other than medical and food necessities, is shut down. I believe Casey did a video on it if you want more info. I'm not probably going to cover that. I might. I don't know. I'm going to need stuff to cover because I'm not going to have haul videos to do. <laughs> uh, and eBay has shut down their customer service. So, um, unfortunately, if you need help, you can't call eBay. And I hope that a lot of buyers don't find this out and start taking advantage of the system. Um, because there's a lot of stuff that's antiquated with e -tech with eBay that I don't like. Like, did you know that the buyer gets a deadline to return an item? But if you don't call after that deadline and ask them to close that return, it will stay open for months. I thought the spring seller update said they were going to be extending how long they have, too. They'd already did. Yeah. And they've already extended um, the lowest. If you have the um, automated unpaid item assistant, the, the shortest amount of time you can now choose is four days. We used to do two. But you have to call and ask them to close a return if they go past their time for shipping it or it will stay open for two months. So you might have people returning stuff two months after all of this. I don't know. Um, if you call the number, even if you have concierge, which we do, it says <laughs> it's something really professional about complying with the emergency but in my mind this is what i heard hello welcome to 1982 we don't have any way of having our phone workers work from home they answered the phone how could they not work from home that's going to be a new economy. And, and also, I think after this, you might find a lot more jobs actually become virtual. So that's another thing you might want to think about is what kinds of stuff people might need for a home office setup in terms of things to have in your store. Oh, we can't even open unpaid item cases now until April 15th. Oh. That's wonderful. Adapt, adapt, adapt. I'm just this going to turn. I'm going to adapt by taking off the... I guess best offer doesn't matter. You can turn on that that they have to pay immediately, but I have all of my immediate pay, but I do have best offer on a few of them, and that's where they can get me. Yeah, I have best offer on just because of the boost it gives in the searches. Yeah, exactly. That's what I think. But it's yeah, I called it this morning just to confirm before we announced it tonight. And I swear that's what I heard in my head was, hello, welcome to 1982 Antiquated Customer Service. We have no way of having our phone workers telecommute from home. I'm not very happy with it right now. I understand the whole world's going to crap and non-essential stuff is shutting down, but a lot of non-essential stuff is working from home. And if other businesses can find a way to communicate, I don't understand why eBay is there's actual companies that hire people to work from home to stay on their phones. Yeah. Um, and that's going to be the way of the world, I think, in the future. Yeah. So, yeah, e Amazon FBA. But you can still call um, FBM, whatever you want. And you're not going to be able to get a hold of any help on eBay and taxes. And I think we covered everything we wanted to cover. Did you want to add anything else? Nope, that was, that was what we talked about, what we wanted to talk about today. All right. Do you want to leave us with any wise words? Do you have any wise words? <laughs> Wash your stinking hands. Yes. Um, Wash your damn hands, people. Wash them. Kick your hands off your face. And stay home. What Absolutely. Else? Don't call 911 because you can't find toilet paper because apparently that's a problem right now. Oh, geez. Yeah. <laughs> Stay home. If you need food, if you need to go get medication or prescriptions, go. But be safe about it. Wash your hands. Don't touch your face. Don't touch other people. Cough into your elbow. 
stay home. I can't uh, stress that one enough. <laughs> and uh, if you do go out grocery shop, stock up for about two weeks if you can afford it. That would be great. Just so you don't have to keep running out. My, my husband's one of these people is always like every day, oh, I, I need this. I'm going to run to the store. Oh, I need that. I'm going to run to the store. I'm like, dude, stop. Yeah. Just get a whole bunch of stuff and that's it. And then we'll live with it. Yeah. Um, rice and beans go along with that. I learned that from Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey, rice and beans. Um, all right, guys. So be careful. Please be safe. Do follow Esmeralda's channel. It's Semper Apparatus. So Semper, S E M P E R, and then apparatus, like, you know apparatus and yep. uh we're on youtube holly's and, got uh, it's a channel there. that's about disaster management like right now the channel is is about what's going on in the world and i've done some live stuff that went taken down i've got a couple of i've got a video on there right now about um do you do it yourself uh face masks if necessary because people can't get their hands on any um and we're going to be doing a a whole video on deep diving on sanitation uh, and that's going to be uh, coming up this week. So please do subscribe. I'm, I'm a baby brand new channel. Uh, but you, we will eventually branch out to other topics relative to preparedness and, and disasters. So, uh, But right now, of course, everyone's talking about the same thing. Yeah. Holly has, the link there. The Holly has the link there. Make sure you follow her. Like, I said, like she said, there's a lot of great information about what's going on now. And we look forward to um, different topics in the future. Guys, hit the thumbs up before you leave. It really, really helps our channel. Make sure you go over to um, Esmeralda's channel, subscribe to her, subscribe to us, and help us feed these hungry hippos back here. Um, go be productive. Go make some money. Go be safe. Wash your damn hands. Be safe and Don't panic. <laughs> yes. Be prepared. Don't be scared. And uh, stay inside. Wash your hands. Thank you guys for watching. Um, as always, I appreciate each and every one of you. I wouldn't have a chance to talk to you guys. And I do love and care for you. So please be safe. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.